All right. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate it. It's always good to be able to share, talk ball. And, and this is one of the things that's made this whole ordeal that much more palatable and, and, and really, I mean, educational. I mean, I've learned a ton of stuff just watching everybody else talk. So um, I'm going to talk about, you know, fourth defense, um, dealing with uh, Tampa coverage, cover three. Um, it's something that uh, I got uh, I dabbled with my first couple of years uh, working as a coordinator. And then I got immersed in it at University of Buffalo. Um, where our D coordinator was uh, a guy that came over from the Lions who had worked under Rod Marinelli. And uh, one of the things I was charged with doing was drawing up the playbook. He would draw it by hand and I'd draw it on computer. And, and that really helped me kind of learn the, the nuances of, you know, what the, the defense was. So Really, it's uh, it's it's this Monty Kiffin style defense, uh, you know, but Pete Carroll and, and everybody's kind of gone through, especially in the uh, um, earlier 2000s, you know, four, three based. Uh, I've run this pack just four different seasons as a D coordinator. And the things that really kind of stood out for me was we created a lot of turnovers in that. And a lot of it was keeping everything in front, guys rallying it, first man tackle, second man strip, third man recover, that kind of deal. Um, you know, it was sound, you know, gap sound. We, uh, we did a lot of stuff in terms of just, you know, letting our kids know, you know, this is your gap, this is your responsibility, this is your fit, this is your help. Um, those are the things I liked about it. And, um, you know, it was just, it was really easy to kind of implement, um, you know, kind of going through. Uh, FYI, I always put this is not a defense at Roosevelt, um, you know, though we have some aspects of our, our, our spot drops with our cover three stuff. But um, this was that, you know, if I was getting back into running defense again, I'd probably lean towards this, uh, this style. All right, so we're going to go through basically, you know, the cover two aspects, the cover three aspects, and then man free. Uh, that's kind of the base bulk of the package. Um, you know, there's over fronts, there's under fronts. Uh, we're going to kind of focus more on the over front stuff here because you know, we could go on for a few hours uh, just going through the whole playbook uh, that uh, that I had and that I've kept for the, the last few years and really it wasn't until digging through some old uh, hard drives that I came across I'm like oh hey this might be a good topic so I reached out to Justin and here we are um, but when you're looking at uh, the the cover two stuff uh, the big thing is is that uh, the corners are allowed to be physical you know your safeties are deep staying on top of everything and you'll see in some of the clips I ended up pulling up clips from uh, the Cowboys the Jaguars who are our traditional uh, uh, Tampa style styles of teams. Uh, they're very deep. You know, some of these guys are 20 yards deep. Uh, so maybe the speed's different. Four-man rush, uh, you know, keep everything in front and rally and tackle. Um, in the Tampa defense, the middle linebacker is going to shuffle out, and he's going to keep things thinking pass first. So, you know, actually the attitude we said is you want to be uh, uh, thinking you're, it's a draw play first. So you're going to ease out, ease out. Oh, it's run and rally. Uh, but when we're playing our cover three and our man-free variations, that's our eight-man box. We're playing the run. We're loading up. Here we go. Um, big thing in cover three is we want to reroute seams um, and make sure that we're being very physical uh, with those uh, with those types types of routes. Um, all the zone stuff is QB key, and this is probably the biggest difference. Um, when you talk about QB key, everything's based on what's the quarterback looking at. Is he looking left, looking right? And so it's not a pattern match style. You know, I actually got into a conversation and what about two read versus zone and can we read the routes? And you're teaching two different things. And if you're trying to tell kids, hey, we got to keep our eyes on the quarterback, but they're looking at 10 different things, then they're not going to be as disciplined in breaking off the quarterback. So, again, it comes back to, you know, your comfort level. You know, if you're, uh, you know, and I, I probably started out more of a pattern match guy my first couple of years until I kind of got into this. And not to say that pattern match uh, isn't good or bad. It's just sometimes it depends on what fits your kids. Sometimes, you know, we had this problem this year. We were a pattern match man cover team. And our kids couldn't determine the difference between pattern match zone and man. And they were chasing everything. So when we went through it, we're like, we need to have it completely different. So we're a man team. And we're going to be a spot drop cover three team. So that was at least an aspect uh, that we brought to the table from kind of this style, just to help our kids out in terms of determining the differences with our zone and man concepts. Um, the other thing is uh, the breaks are all off the QB hand, your hand off the ball. All right. So if that quarterback's dropping back and he starts looking, we're going to melt our zones. So the guys will start creeping, creeping, creeping. And as soon as that hand comes off the ball, it's a hair trigger break. And so I pulled some uh, uh, clues.
kind of being on that hair trigger. And then the other thing about the package too is it's built in disguises, all right? Just based on the calls, whether we're going, you know, our man free to cover three, everything's going to look the same. Um, and then, you know, cover two, we can spin up, spin out, um, jockey with safeties in terms of, you know, showing a three, cover three look, working to two, or rolling from two, working into three. So there's some things that are already built in where you don't have to really create disguise. It's kind of already inherent. All right, so man, uh, man uh, uh, the cover three and man free, that's gap responsible. That's our eight man box. Cover two in the run game. The linebackers have to be a two-gap player. So we always use a technique we call rope-a-dope, and I'll show that in one of the uh, the drawings here and, and how we work that in terms of kind of peel, a double team off to single up the alignment, and then he falls back into the opposite gap because there's not enough bodies to fill gaps in, in, in two-back run. And then there's always going to be late alley help for, from the corner or the uh, – from the safety or corner as the force because we're out in space. So – there are some elements where you can have some eight man box and cover two, but it's and we want to make sure we bounce it to them. All right. So the other interesting thing about this is that how we adjust to motions. If we were in base personnel, three linebackers, we're just bumping and adjusting, sliding things in our, in our coverage or our safeties are spinning. Simple. But when we got into our nickel packages, which is where we predominantly worked out of just based on seeing 10 and 11 personnel stuff, our nickel was going to travel with his man, whether it was zone or man. He was going to travel. And because the nickel would travel, that means our linebackers would have to flip. Sounds like a lot of movement for one, for one guy, but if you rep it out, it really becomes seamless. Um, I know I had a little, little trouble kind of adjusting to that, thinking, hey, we're moving three when one guy moves. But... The other side of that is that our nickels are always going to be space guys. They're not going to be in the box because our nickel was a third corner. So it wasn't a safety. It wasn't a, he was a third corner because we were going to cover man. He was going to play in space. That's where we needed him. Um, our linebackers would flip because our middle runner was our middle runner. That's what he was trained to do. And then our backer, our outside backer was our outside backer. That's what he was trained to do. So that where you can keep backers and not flip them if you have guys that are basically – you know, clones of each other, same type of body type, and they understand that. I did adjust that uh, from time to time. But the big thing is having that nickel run with that because the nickel's always going to be the nickel doing what he's supposed to do. All right? And the middle runner is always the middle runner. The nickel guy's not a box guy. Just And then big thing with, especially in the cover two style defense, got to have four guys are going to rush. Um, I made the mistake one year um, uh, coaching at a place where we didn't have really great pass rushers but I really wanted to do this and it hurt us because we could cover guys, but next thing you know, you're covering for four, five seconds and we're not at the quarterback. You know, you're just going to get picked apart. So again, you got to have the ability to rush for those four. All right. So I talked about this earlier zone, uh, zone versus matchup zone. Um, you know, it's difficult to teach, pat teach a pattern read style concept and also be a QB spot drop concept. Um, it just in my opinion, I think it's just very difficult. You know, if you're trying to tell safeties to read two to one rather than pedal off and let the quarterback dictate it, those are two different things. So again, you got to find what you're comfortable teaching and what works for you. And, you know, if you have guys that are smart enough that they can do both, hey, great. But it also takes a lot of teaching time and finding that time to do that might not be conducive uh, to being as efficient as you want with your practices. Um, and then it comes down to finding what your kids can do well. Um, I've done both pattern read. I've done, you know, spot drops, and it's determining what helps them play fast. All right, so this is just a uh, uh, a, uh, a picture of base uh, – shoot, no, I'm getting uh, – of how we work our alignments. So uh, close zero, open zero. So close is where we always make our strength call. Open is away. And this is how our linebackers would align. Stack A, stack B, stack C. So if we said stack – Toes at five, A gap, B gap, C gap, all right? And if we had a number in there, 20, 30, uh, 40, or what we call tan, you know, those were just basically like the alignments that our, our D line would be in. Um, and then a loose nine was our, 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 our buck backer who would be up on the line of scrimmage on the tight end. Um, and then if we had a choke call, that was just a uh, alignment where we put our guy who was man coverage on the tight end, inside leverage at the line of scrimmage, C gap player. So that's how we determine our alignments for our guys. And then for alignments for guys in space, 
whether it was a backer or a safety or a nickel, he would be a hip, a sky, a seam, or a walk. So that's, we just basically gave them, hey, you're a walk. A walk is a one by four. You're a seam, split the difference. You're a sky, three by four. You're a hip, one by three. So we try to take a little bit of the gray area in terms of telling our guys where to align and give that to them in, the, in their playbook saying, hey, we're calling this, this is where you're at. And if we need to make a game plan adjustment you know, versus particular sets, we can also tell them, hey, seam it, walk it, whatever you need to do. So starting out, uh, when we installed this, it was always going to be a, um, a overzone Y was our install package. I'm going to go over it briefly. Uh, and I'm going to focus more on the over eight because that's more of the clips that I had that illustrates some of the stuff. But when we uh, talk about our fronts, our over front, we're always going to be a six technique, a three, a one, and a five. Right? The big thing with the six, it just – it keeps uh, the safety who is going to be rolling down in our overzone Y package. So basically it's a strong safety roll cover three. It's going to keep him outside the box, D-gap player, and then keep all the linebackers in the box. Um, you know, the other thing I liked about our six technique is it was always a um, mindset of a domination mindset, um, especially even, you know, you're talking 15 years ago, tight ends were being flexed out more. You didn't have a lot of great inline blockers. and so. The mentality was our DN was going to be better than your tight end. We're going to put him head up on the tight end and just make a bad day for him, you know, and just be physical, beat him up, and really try to wreak havoc in the run game. So that was at least the mindset there. Um, the other front that we play, and you'll, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit, is our Omaha front, and that's just basically now our nine front. You know, we got a nine technique in, pass type stuff. We also will play that more in our over eight, and uh, I'll illustrate why. So, uh, usually that's how we install. I'm going to briefly just kind of go through our alignments here. Uh, D gap align. So, you'll see in here uh, some of the, you'll see D7. So, it means he's going to be D gap aligned seven yards. C7, he'd be C gap aligned seven yards. So, again, we're trying to be as descriptive as possible how we want to uh, um, get our guys to align. And then when it comes to our run fits, we had a hammer player, which is our force player. Our lever player, which is similar to a hammer player, he's going to be outside the fit or outside pullers or H's, but it's always going to occur inside the box. So anything inside uh, if it's a C gap in terms of inside the tight end or B gap, he's going to fit inside of there. And then the spill player was always going to be an inside fit on a pull or an H. So guys would know, hey, I'm a hammer guy because I'm the force. I'm outside of everything when I'm outside of the box. Lever and spill, uh, linebackers or safeties determining, hey, I'm going to spill this guy, I'm going to be inside fit, or I'm going to be a lever guy, I'm going to be outside the fit. So, again, that's how we kind of uh, – and you guys will be able to go through and, and rewatch this um, later on um, on your huddle so you can kind of see how the rules go, how we align our guys up, you know, and then the detail out in terms of their pass uh, responsibilities here as far as their zone uh, cover three stuff. All right, again – just highlighting that uh, six technique of the over. So this is a, just a quick uh, uh, page on our adjustments and how we adjust to motions. So here it's just a bump and adjust situation. All right, he motions across, corner's gonna come down, safety's gonna work from a sky back to a C7. All right, he's gonna walk out. So right now we've gained the corner and then we have the safety out here. He's still gonna bail, he's still gonna come down in terms of the run fits. It's just a matter of disguising our alignments and how we work that. Um, the one thing to note here is that any time we get a one back set, we always made a seam alert call. All right. And the big thing on seam alert is telling everybody, hey, we've got spread out guys. He's going to reroute number two. All right. The big thing is he wants to reroute. Corner's going to midpoint, but the free safety is always going to lean to the nickel or in this case, the buck linebacker side because we'll get the reroute to help him out. And the strong safety is going to always work a carry. So if he gets too vertical here, he is going to carry, 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 carry. And basically, he's going to open up and have vision on outside leverage on the carry. So if we get a back flat late, he'll pop off. QB key, if the quarterback's looking this way, the safety is going to lean back. But he will carry in case we get four verticals. Um, to me, that was a technique that once I kind of uh, saw that and learned that, I got a lot more comfortable with cover three where early in my, in my years was uh, my th philosophy on cover three was great against everything stops nothing. Um, so that really changed my mindset in terms of how we taught that. 
helped us in terms of being able to play four verticals and cover three, having a four-man box and stuff. All right, so I'm um, just go right here. So this is our, our over eight, uh, and our over eight stuff basically is um, – let me get this out of my way here. Uh, our over eight is the opposite of our over zone Y. It's a weak roll. So now we're going to work, work the free safety down away from the tight end. So now in this case, we play in over front with a, our Omaha front with our nine technique. I got our backer in the box, so he'll be a lever player. He'll be a spill player, all right? He'll be a gap player. Free safety's here. And then opposite, he'd be a uh, potential lever player, spill player, backside player. So that's how – that's the biggest difference here in terms of – the difference with our over zone wide or over eight. And I have more clips of the over eight stuff from what I was able to pull, but same philosophy. We're just changing who's rolling down. Again, you'll be able to go through the different rules um, that are uh, illustrated here after. Again, we have the adjustments. So one thing I do like about over eight is that when there is motion, we have a free safety that's going to roll instead of our, our linebacker coming out of the box. So you keep your box backers doing what they do the in box backers. Um, and then your safety can be out in space. Um, you know, the one uh, uh, advantage, at least with over zone Y, is that I did like playing uh, the six technique front. Again, it comes down to what you like, what you fit, what your preferences are. I've worked for guys that they prefer the nine technique over everything. So that's what we did. So this would be um, our adjustment. But same rules apply in terms of we're going to reroute here. And now the will linebacker has to be the carry player in cover three. All right. So knowing that we're just going to get a reroute here, we got to carry here, the strong safety can still lean to the two receiver side and then work off his QB key to help out on four verticals just in case. All right, so here's some run fits and kind of illustrating our, our lever spill concepts. So here, because it's inside the box, Buck is going to spill. He's a lever, all right? He's going to be inside. So lever is really just another word for force player inside the box. Uh, a gap run through, so he gets flow here. We know we got gaps taken out. If he has a window right here, he's going to take this thing. And sometimes you'll see this guy gets a run through, almost looks like he's blitzing the gap. And if guys get really good at just seeing this window, this is a great uh, opportunity for guys to make some big plays. And then you know, Will is a C gap runner. You know, again, open window, closed window concepts apply as far as reads go. So if this was open, he can take it and run, run off the backside. If it's closed off because of the way the linemen are playing it, he can scrape and just try to find that next open window. All right. So here, the way we called our plays, you know, Mary was, you know, basically an ISO to the middle linebacker. Betty was to the buck. Um, you know, we just, it's just how I was taught and how we named our plays. Um, that's just kind of, you know, so that's why they're named as they were. I don't even think they call it ISO anymore. Uh, if you look at the stretch play here, because it's a scrape outside now and it's outside the box, he's going to be the hammer player, turn everything back in. Now he's got to find the new gap off the puller. So they're just working next available gap, next available gap. And then here now, because we were a bend and chase team, he wants to basically rope a dope. He's going to come here, pull the tackle off, fall in behind, play boot, play quarterback, whatever it is, and bend it. You can flip this, have him be the quarterback player, and have him just basically be a, a B gap runner. However you want to do it, you can change it up. You can have calls to change it up. Basically, it just comes down to what you feel comfortable doing with your personnel. So again, this is just illustrates how we work our run fits. Um, you know, the other things guys do too, and, and, and sometimes it's a preference. You'll see uh, this backer here. He might go spill and let this linebacker scrape. You got a linebacker with speed, and you want to, or I should say this Mike would spill and the, the buck would scrape because we always want him the force player. So working the lever and spill, you can change up those responsibilities. And again, it comes back to, you know, your comfort level. I've done it both ways as well, where a player in this situation, you know, might uh, um, spill this, the mic would spill this, so the, this buck could work over the top. You know, and a lot of times on this double team, this guy's going to pick him off, but if he works over the top, it helps him keep him clean. So again, it comes down to different things that you see that help your team. All right, so this is an example here of uh, over eight. So we've got our hammer player, which is going to be the safety here. We got our lever and spill players here, and then this is our lever hammer player here. He's bonus right now. He's a third player, so he'll scoot out, and then he's just an alley player, second contain. This is the call side because you'll see at least the tight. This is the, uh, the the nine and the three, and then we've got our two by and our five. Um, actually, it'll be a uh, seven technique on the tight end. 
Going on to the tight angle here now. So we're gonna get a pirate stunt in this situation. And the pirate stunt basically is a very common stunt you'll see with a lot of teams that run, you know, the Tampa style zone style stuff. They're just trying to wreak havoc here. You know, if they have a, a corner that's gonna be an alley player as well, it helps kind of clean the read up because if he chases, he sees it's blocking, I can be an extra pad in the, bo in, in the box. So these guys are gonna stunt cross face, cross face, He's a D-gap squeeze player, so he's going to squeeze down that D-gap and make sure that there's nothing coming against the grain. And then you've got our lever, spill, run-through guy. Now, if they know there's a, a pirate going on here, they should be fairly clean. And these two backers get pretty clean right here. He does a great job getting the set in this edge. And we get the bonus hat that's just right there. The big thing with the D-gap squeeze player, and, and, and sometimes you know, you're kind of left, like I'm not doing, right to the line of scrimmage and sit on that D-gap. Quarterback boot, tight end, delay block, you know, something just cut back, whatever it is, we want him here. We've got guys over here doing their job. Trust them to do their job because if they do, you might get some work coming at your way. But if you decide to go get over Zelson, and I'm going to go start running this way, and all of a sudden he cuts back, all right, that's not a good situation. So, again, it's very gap responsible, almost like an option defensive mindset. You know, hey, just keep responsibilities, defend your gap, do it aggressively, and good things will happen. All right, so here's another example of, of the run fit here. So we now we got a safety, which is more like a nickel. Um, backer, backer, backer. So hammer, lever, spill, D-gap, squeeze. Now, I paused it here because you'll have smaller guys, DB safeties that have to challenge an offensive alignment or puller. And you'll see this guy does a great job. And one of the coaching points we always told those guys is saw off the outside leg. So if you're the hammer player and I've got a puller coming at me or big H or whoever it is, I want to saw off the outside leg, almost like you're just chopping him down. Because if you try to go take him on half a man, a smaller guy's going to get thrown out of the bar. All right. And, you know, he could be a, a strong weight room guy, but it's just physics. I mean, you got a 250 pound guy versus 150 pound guy. It's just not going to work. So you got to think more of a torpedo mentality and saw it off that outside leg. And you'll see this guy does a great job just being an athlete in space, forcing the issue where this H is blocking air. Linebacker does a great job doing what he's taught to do in terms of challenging this block, working over the top. Boom, gets that arm free. Now we got bodies on the ball. But again, we weren't going to be uh, overzealous and, and thinking, all right, hey, you're out there, you know, just got to, you know, punch him with an arm and set the edge. That's not realistic for a smaller player, you know. But when you start, start chopping down those bigger guys, those guys start thinking in their head, oh, man, that guy's, I mean, my knees, I got to protect my knees. They're going to start walking on eggshells and tiptoeing through there. All right, so let them be aggressive and taking the, taking the edge. It's going to force a cutback, get these guys where they need to be. You can see how he's working his D-gap squeeze. You know, and they're good to go. All right, so going in, that was basically our base cover three defense. Now, that was just base personnel, three linebackers, four down linemen. Nickel 86 is now basically our same cover three defense with nickel personnel. All right, so when we call six, we're rolling to the passing string. Strong safety is going to roll down. When we call eight, we're going to roll away from the passing trink. That's the free safety. So our, our strong safety was always going to the tight end as far as alignments go um, and uh, passing strength. So if we were in pro to the tight end, if we were in um, you know, uh, spread defense here, we got three receivers to the left. He'll be the left. And here we got two quick receivers to the right. So that's how they switch. And you'll see the disguise that works out when we go to our, our one plug stuff. 
but it allows our linebackers to be here in the box, to do the run. He rolls down to the edge. He's got his cover man here. And we're one gap, one back, one gap. So we got that one back mentality. But as far as drops go, all right, they're doing the same thing. They're going to spot drop, you know, you curl flat, curl flat, hook, hook. Same thing. Nothing changes except our personnel. Now, the interesting thing here is, again, when we talk about the motion of the nickel, nickel's going to travel with his guy because we want to keep him with that responsibility. And this is going to play into our man stuff as well. Speed on speed. You see the linebackers are flipping, the will and the mic. Now, again, if you have clones of players with the same type of body type, same speed, same mentality, they understand the nuances of that, you don't have to flip them, all right? So it comes down to, again, comfort level. If you rep it enough, it, it's really not an issue. Uh, but again, sometimes kids just, you know, conceptually can't understand that, and they have to, you know, you have to adjust as far as a coach goes. But we have the same rules with the seam alert. So if we've got any sort of two-by-two two look, we want to make sure we reroute and our free safety is going to lean towards that nickel with the safety having to carry anything vertical by the tight end. All right. We always work the tight end vertical carry because it was a little easier as far as that was the guy that we felt we could run with the best. All right. So here we've got our nickel front here. We've got our safety rolled down. We got our nickel here, so we've got our um, six. I'm sorry, eight. Again, you got the D gap squeezed by the safety. You can see how he's just sprinting right to that line of scrimmage to take that away, and then he actually gets in on the play. So that's a great job by that safety getting to where he needs to. Now, this guy doing a great job getting off the block, no, but the end does a great job setting the edge, forcing the cutback, so we're okay. But a lot of times, and I would see this with younger players, you'd see this guy, he sees play going this way. He wants to take this path, like he's going to help on a, you know, on a big run. Trust that these guys are doing their job. Because now he gets in on the play, gets a tackle for a loss or half a tackle. Do you get squeeze? One back, one gap. So here's his gap, here's his gap. It's that simple. If he gets reached, I'll go to the next gap, that type of mentality. So it really helps these guys play faster. I've got one gap. And that's part of the reason why I also like playing this guy inside, head up on the tight end. So uh, here's an example of coverage. So now in this situation, this is actually cover eight. So instead of rolling a safety down on number three here, they rolled him weak over here. This is Gronkowski. Here's their tailback here. So essentially, it might have been a bit of a matchup issue in terms of if this guy runs a wheel. He's got to run with three, two through the zone in this situation here. The other thing you'll notice, too, is the drop by uh, the nickel here, all right? And this is a drop you'll see a lot with some of these teams that run this cover three and how he's going to open up. But it's going to be the sideline, and he's going to open up with vision to the inside. And a lot of that is just, again, it keeps, comes back to the mentality of QB key. He doesn't need to work his vision out here because he's not going to um, man match. All right. He's just going to open up and read that quarterback. Where is he throwing it? All right. And here's an example, again, of a hair trigger on the top of the drop. So again, you see the, the drop here by the nickel, turn up, open up, run, get to that area. You'll see this better on the tight. But this hook backer starts dropping and he starts melting right away on the quarterback's eyes and you can see him hitch. Uh-oh, I can't throw that because he makes a hard break to take Gronk away there. And now, now the pressure takes over, throws it away. Here's the tight angle. So it's this backer here, all right? In this situation, they made an under front call rather than over front. And partly because gap, gap. Get these linebackers playing their run gaps. It's a lot easier. You got a guy down here who he might be a nickel, it might be a safety, not used to being in the box. You got your nickel out there. So again, they're just matching their front to, you know, responsibilities and what guys do best.
So right now, top of the drop, he sees eyes. He just starts melting his own. Hands off the ball. He is ready to break. All right, hands coming off. He's driving. Quarterback eats it. All right. Tight window. Not going to throw it. And that's the thing. These guys are going to be hair triggers. When they break, when that quarterback does that, those linebackers, those nickels, those safeties, they did their job. Now it's up to these four guys to make sure they track them down. We can't cover in space forever. And when you have a quarterback that looks one way, pumps, they break, and all of a sudden he pumps against the grain and, and throws it over here, that's on these four. They didn't get the pressure. They didn't keep the quarterback from going to a third read. He wanted it here. He didn't have it here. He eats it. Now he's got to run and go. If you have a mobile quarterback, that could create some issues. Not so mobile quarterback, you got a chance to run him down. But again, it still comes down to the D-line helping you out to make the quarterback not get to a third progression in his reads. So here's an example of six. Safety rolls down here. Here's our nickel. Here's our two backers. Three by one. All right. The thing with zone, and I think you can get away with this with slower corners. Um, guys that, you know, Richard Sherman's made a career of being one of the best corners in the NFL, and he's not the fastest corner in the world. I mean, he didn't run a great 40 time at the combine and stuff, but extremely smart. And the other thing he does very well is he transitions. And I think that's something that sometimes uh, coaches get lost at. You know, like, oh, he only runs a 4-6. But, you know, I've seen guys who run a 4-6 who can't transition from a back pedal to a break or a back pedal to a sprint. And it looks like they're just being slow and getting beat by with speed. So transitions are, even with linebackers and, and your safety, transitions are crucial. Going from a pedal to a break, going from an open crossover run to breaking back downhill from what you get off that off the QB key. So it's critical to really understand if your guy has good transitions, but maybe not great speed, that's a guy that could be useful in, in a zone defense because it, if he's smart and can go through those uh, opportunities and, and, and get a good beat on a quarterback's eyes, and he's got quick feet, you can make a lot of hay with that. So when you look at your guys, hey, he could transition well. He's not a speed guy. Well, don't put him in a position where he's got to cover a guy who might be faster than him in man situations or man match. Okay? So it allows you an opportunity to evaluate what your guys can do well and try to find something that fits them. All right, so here – uh, he makes a break, and this is what I love about it, too. It's a vice tackle with him in the sideline. So, you know, he's basically – corner's going to, uh, you know, bail into his third. You know, he's the flat defender, so you've got to keep you know, things inside of him. But as it widens out, he's got the sideline as an extra defender. This is where the turnovers and the tackles and, and limiting uh, extra yard plays come in uh, with this style of uh, zone defense. Um, I think, you know, for a number of years when Lovey Smith was at the Bears, and the Bears were always in the top five – and takeaways and certainly peanut Tillman was part of that but a lot of it was those guys were just hawking onto the ball because there's three four guys that were there uh right after throw you know but what i like is the transition of the feet the linebackers dropping sees it you know now he closes and you can see how much ground he's making while the ball's in the air ball's thrown 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 now it's being caught now i see now he's within you know four yards and he's got a good angle with the sideline as an extra defender. He's able to make a good tackle. You know, that's the other side of things is that if you can make up ground while the ball is in the air, that's going to make you look like a better tackling team because there's less space to have a mistake occur. You know, and that's another factor that I really like about the defense is that it gives you an opportunity to have guys be able to vice tackle. You know, and everybody talks about tackling and, you know, hey, we got to tackle better. And sometimes, you know, athlete versus athlete, you you know, if you got a lesser athlete versus a great athlete, you're going to lose that battle. But if you limit the space that that great athlete has to make a move, you close the gap and having your ability to, to, to close out on those plays. So it comes back to, you know, what can we do to put our kids in a position to be able to execute better? You know, sometimes you just can't make them physically more athletic or faster, but we can make them smarter. And we can make them take efficient angles and, his eyes can be as quick as anybody. I can make up ground when the ball's in the air. And that's part of it, too. Quarterbacks looking, 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 looking. And as soon as he does that, you know, he, corner should be rallying. 
Linebackers are breaking. You know, we got guys running to the ball. So here's an example, just, and this is just general QB key. This is an empty set, uh, cover three. You know, but you can see what this linebacker does here. I'll let it play fast. I'm sorry. I mean, he's making a, he was making up ground before that ball was even thrown. You'll be at a better view on the tight. So right now he's looking. And he knows, and, and part of that, you'll get to a point where you just trust, yeah, that's where he's going to go. I mean, to the point, he could probably pick that. He makes a decision, I'm going to tackle that guy. And, yeah, does he catch it? But it's a bang-bang tackle. All right, zero yards after the catch. And that's where if kids get real good at just, hey, I'm reading that, reading that. And you know, even here, this guy's staring, the, staring his threat down the whole time. You can see that break by that linebacker. He was breaking for his throne. He's breaking right now hard, and that ball's not even in the air. He knows. So those are the things I really like about it and, 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 and how we wanted to drill out and teach our guys to basically look like we were playing faster than maybe we really were. All right, so now we got into our man concert here. This is our nickel one plug. And you can see one plug looks exactly like eight and six all right the role is the same all right eight or six he's covering the tight end he's covering the tight end so now it gives us just built-in disguise hey, are they eight are they six are they one plug everything looks the same leverage is going to be the same across the board all right we're going to be outside leverage on these guys why because we've got a low hole plugger and we got a deep hole guy so we're okay as far as in breaking routes we'll ride the hip push it to a plugger guy you know, it'll be a bang bang play, or that linebacker or that um, safety can uh, knock the ball away based on where it's thrown. All right. We have our alignments here. All right. We've got our responsibilities here. We always called it Reggie when the linebackers were sharing the backer. That's just how I learned it. It's just two guys on one. That goes this way, he's low hole. That goes this way, he's low hole. Again, just uh, aligning up versus uh, various different fronts. You guys can peek at that a uh, little later. Oop, let me go back here. So we have one plug. Again, corners are going to always travel with the motion. All right, so we'll go corners over on this, and partly because our safeties are covering tight ends, keeps them in the run fit. That's what they usually do. Corners, speed on speed. That's keep them where they need to be. In this case, they get into a bunch set, so we have our point guy and two guys are off. Big thing in man coverage that we always harped on is these guys in any sort of bunches or stacks, they have to be at different levels, all right? Cannot be at the same level, just so we don't get rubbed. Motions across. And man, safety can come right down, and he can be in a, in a loose nine. He could be in a sky. This is an ability alignment. Hey, I could play this guy. He's more of a receiver type. I can be physical with him. Hey, he's really big and physical. I'm going to give myself some space. Run fits are the same, though. Same as 86. One back, one gap. So, again, nothing changes as far as run fits go. We're just playing more man concept here. Now we're going to get on routes right now. So really, this kind of takes away the uh, the need to have the matchup zone because we're just playing man anyway. So we're just going to declare it, line it. We have our disguise with the eight of the six. And now we can really build into things and, and be another discussion altogether when you start adding in the uh, uh, various pressure packages that all build in and look the same. Hey, are they running, you know, a mic blitz, a will blitz? You know, are they running a, a, a peel blitz? You know, all sorts of things that all look like the other thing. So a couple things you could do with your one plug coverage. So you have your low hole. You can play the crosser or you can play the uh, QB based on game plan. All right. So you can do a lot of different things in here. In this particular game, you can see what the Cowboys did. Russell Wilson was an athletic guy. He was a scrambler. So instead of having him play low hole crossers, they're saying, hey, you're going to spy this guy. He gets out of contain, you're gone. Mash up man, 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 man. They're man across the board. They got their linemen getting ready to go. And you can see on the pressure, he goes and now, again, forces the issue. All right. And, again, it's a game plan thing of what you want to do with that low hole guy.
And you can see he was just patient, patient, patient. And he knew right away, oh, I know where he's going to scramble. And, and part of that, too, is in game plans, hey, he likes to scramble to his right or scramble a gap, you know, whatever your game plan dictates. But he was coming on him right now and helped eliminate a lot of that space where he can make that, uh, make that uh, you know, escape. So now here's an example of this linebacker taking away the read of the slant right here. Again, QB key, it's what he's been trained to do. Look in, melt and melt and break. I can't throw. Quarterback eats it. You'll see it better on this tight. I mean, he saw him right in his vision. Took it away. Can't throw that. And then this is an example of the linebacker here rerouting a low hole crosser. Now, the big thing when you're rerouting low hole crossers as they drag across the middle, he's got to step in front, make that guy go behind or run square into you. Because if you reroute him and then you stay high, you're going to knock off one of your own teammates. He does a good job of stepping up in front. Right there. Knocks him off, push him, knocks him back towards the line of scrimmage. And you'll see on the tight, it disrupts the throw. Right there. And then now he's not ready to, you know, he's not ready to catch the ball. So let's say you have a middle linebacker, not the best mover in the world, you know, and, and depending on how you set it up, you can just make him your low hole guy. And I've been around a couple of guys that they did a great job of just knocking guys that are crossing in front of people because they weren't going to be able to run with the man to man or run with a tailback man to man. So it's something where you can actually declare a guy pre snap and just do, do what linebackers do hit things. And you know, that's what, one of the things I really liked about at least a plug defense is, Hey, you know what? Middle linebacker, you play in the box. You don't move all that well. Let's just have you knock the crap out of something. All right. So now we've got into our cover two stuff. All right. Over two is basically just, you know, cover two with, um, you know, base linebacker personnel. Nickel over two is just nickel personnel. Same thing. So we're just replacing a, you know, linebacker run type guy with a pass type guy. Um, you know, you'll see, you know, again, the alignments that we'll have versus various formations. Um, you know, the big thing that um, we go through when we're talking with these guys is what their responsibilities are. So here, um, looking at the safety, or I'm sorry, the corner, his responsibility, reroute, disrupt, or release the number one, all right? Post reroute, determine the tools, or determine departure tools. So departure tools are basically how he's going to drop. Is he going to hinge, exit? Uh, or um, man up, you know, with a burst. So it, 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 we'll give them these different tools. You know, a hinge basically, if he's just going to open up, pass the sideline, get vertical. Exit will be on a reroute, on an in-breaking route. He's going to, you know, shuffle in, reroute, reroute. And as he goes away, he's going to exit now back to the sideline and then get vertical. You know, man could be just a press situation, you know, bang and go. You know, and then we got to determine if it's a run situation to us, Got to make sure we get to a four situation. So we're going to give them different tools as far as what that corner is responsible to do. Uh, their base alignment is going to be four yards off, head up, and then we can press them or we can play off. And now we can start working some different disguises just based on alignments. You know, so that's a big thing. Safeties here, landmark QB key, and again, responsibilities. You know, plus three yards off the hash. Um, you know, boundary if they're if they're to the boundary. You know, four yards off the hash. QB is going to basically determine their angles, 90, 45, 135. You know, so just basic uh, geometry as far as the angles of attack. Break flat 90, down at 45, or back at 135, you know, towards, you know, that fade route. Again, same thing with our motion stuff. Nickel's going to run, linebacker's got to flip. Some other general alignments. If we get a two tight end uh, look, 
we're going to make a gus check which basically just tells us to go two i in a seven all right so run fit wise again he's going to look at it as a draw first so he's going to shuffle shuffle out and then come late so he's not going to be a fast filled guy for the most part um you know depending on their ability to key and read, you know, maybe it works out that way, but essentially he wants to think he's a pass player first and that's why they're calling it, but you will get some run plays. Down here is what I'm talking about where we got to, we're basically got to think about it as we've got seven men in the box, but they've got an extra hat in here. So what do we have this backer do? We have him come like he's going to fit right here, peel the center off the block of the nose to help the nose come off clean. And then he's going to fall back into the B in case there's a cutback. So this is what we would call a rope adult. So this is a, a unique technique, you know, and, and something we practice. But again, we didn't want to be in a situation where we're playing a ton of cover two against run, but it does happen. So we just gave them some tools to prepare in terms of how to respond to that. All right, so here we got some cover two run fits here. So in this situation, he's basically the force player. So you can see by alignment, he's playing off. He's got vision in. They decide to go block the safety. He comes off and sets the edge. Now you'll see on this angle here, they run a pirate stunt. Now, a lot of times when there's cover two called, especially, you know, and you know you've got your corner here and this is the call side, they're going to run the pirate to get things to bounce to that corner, take away that extra inside gap. So you'll see a lot of teams that'll call over pirate two, and that's just how they're going to defend the run and take away that, that, that two gap linebacker. You'll see with this stunt here, it takes away a lot of guys, keeps him clean, almost gets that linebacker clean. But now they get in a situation where they got two hats on the ball. Technically, this linebacker could have levered this thing or spilled it right to that corner, but just does a good job of just being an athlete. All right, same thing. Here we got over two pirate again. So they're going to pirate in here. He's going to come in on the run. And you'll see how these linebackers, they're scraping right now. So you'll see, they get the stun here, cleans everything. These two guys are coming downhill clean and they actually end up inside the puller. But where they end up, he beats this tackles block here just because he knows what his responsibility is and he beats it with speed and he just scrapes over the top as an unblocked defender. And again, that's just a way too. I mean, technically, go out here, spill in here, you're fine, he's bonus, all right? But they both go inside and then he scrapes over the top tight, which is a really good fit, really good play, squares himself up. Now, the other way you can do this too is this linebacker, he could have just let him go, let him spill, and then he works over the top because I know I've got a force player coming here. So again, you could play that either way and you'd be fine instead of getting two guys inside the puller. So here's just an alley safety coming in late. Pirate cleans up gap issues. So now we're getting some coverage. Open up the three, you know, shuffle out. And basically, you know, if he gets an uh, opportunity that he's got to run deep, he'll run deep. He still has his eyes on the QB, sees the QB throwing it short, rally, tackle. You'll see his open up hips to the sideline. He's gonna open up and run the rail.
but essentially this is what they want to do. We want to be able to get these guys covered deep, throw shallow, rally and tackle. So this is just a pre-depth. So it's third and a country mile. So these guys are just going to line up at depth. And then it's just a matter of they're throwing a screen, rally, keep everything inside, make sure they don't get the first down, get off the field. Now, this is an issue with cover two. I put this in here for, for this reason, all right? And it's just the basic bender route. As this guy spots drops, if he gets too wide, it just creates a wide open seam here, you know, especially this safety is working to go deep. And right there, that's just a nice, easy window for a lot of quarterbacks. He gets too wide. The big thing is you want to sink, and as that quarterback's looking at you, you got to sink with, with an idea that I got to melt back to the inside because that he's going to run that bender. If he runs wide and breaks on a corner, that's a safety all the way, and you got the corner bailing. So we've got to do a better job of make sure we protecting that, and that's a big thing that I was harped on with, with our guys is playing that bender. Now here they're going to run the bender. And this guy does a great job of being underneath, and it's a tight window. All right, and with that tight window, you put air on the ball, and it gives a safety chance to get over the top and knock it down. You see how tight that bad boy is, but the safety is right there to prevent the catch. And so this is really a, a, a thing that you want to make sure you get across and really any cover too is that bender route. Sink underneath that right there. Make that throw tough. All right, so the other adjustment that we would have in, in our Tampa stuff is we play Tucson. And all Tucson is now is we're going to spot up and instead of our middle linebacker being a deep middle runner, he's going to spot up on three. So if there's a check down, a spot route, Anything shallow, he is going to play that thing. It's going to really look more like a, a two-man type idea. All right. The other thing is that anything vertical, these outside linebackers will carry vertical. So they'll carry a vertical route, take them to the safety to help take that away. So really it was a change-up. It's a big-time change-up for us, especially you'll get teams that will run spot routes just like that especially with, you know, tight ends like that. Take that away. And now we get a nice vice tackle. And that's the thing here too, all right? And this is, you're going to get this at your level. Guys are going to be good in space. They make you miss. Next guy missed, but you got more hats to the ball. You know, a three-yard gain becomes a six-yard gain rather than a 15-yard gain. Just getting eyes and hats to break on the ball fast. So it helps eliminate a lot of those big plays. All right, and then the other change up is a two spy, which basically is this Tampa. Now you're taking your one of these D linemen and drop, dropping them into the hole to take away that spot route and then letting everybody play this deep third. So here we get the, a reroute, run the rail. Basically, this guy takes a wide outside release, so he's just going to open up and hinge and go. You see the lineman dropping out, taking up the spot. Along this linebacker could take his control deep drop, takes away this bender. He's in a pretty good position with this bender. Quarterback now got to make a decision. What do I do with the ball? What do I do with the ball? Now guys can run after him. This is really how, you know, you know, two spies should work. The next clip, you'll see what happens when it goes awry. So here they run the same thing, two spy. But now you've got this guy jumping the shallow, and this is Gronkowski, so oops. If he runs deep, they take that away. They're in good position. We got two guys biting on this shallow guy, and that's not Gronkowski. That's uh, – Edelman, Edelman running across the middle. 
So again, you know, even at the highest levels, guys make mistakes, but you know, if guys execute what they needed to do, probably in a good position to take that away, maybe get the sack, those type of ideas. So that's my email. If you got any questions, you know, D-line, special teams, talking ball, anything like that, um, you know, this will be up on uh, Justin's uh, uh, Google page. You know, so if you want to take a look at some things and uh, anything else that pops up, um, I don't know if we got any time, if guys have any questions, I'll feel free to answer. You know, I wanted to basically go through the, the, the bulk of what we'd install because it can be very vast. Um, I think my playbook was like 80 pages once it got all said and done. But, um, you know, it, it, it's good stuff if you've got, you know, the ability to kind of, you know, figure out what your guys do well and what fits. Um, and I've learned that this is great in some situations, but I've also learned that you know, it's not great in some situations based on your personnel. So, you know, just making sure you match your personnel and what you're able to do. Absolutely. Uh, guys, if, if, if anybody has any questions, uh, you can drop it in that chat right there. Uh, if not, you know, if you have, if you, something comes up to you later on, obviously coach has shared his Twitter cell number and email. Um, if anybody has any follow-up stuff and like, like coach uh, mentioned, you know, coach D line does, uh, and special teams as well and, and does a tremendous job uh, with the special team stuff and, um, you know, has a ton of great, great stuff. He, he's done one presentation on it already that's worth checking out. But if you guys had any questions um, in regards to that scheme or drills, uh, things like uh, things of that nature, man, he's definitely, uh, definitely want to check out for sure. But uh, nobody has any questions, man. We'll, we'll wrap this one up. Obviously, we want to thank all the coaches for, for coming in here and, uh, you know, just being willing to, to get better and learn. And of course, the coach Lund, man, for taking the time out of his day. Uh, to present to us and allow us uh, to learn something new and get better. So appreciate that, Coach. Um, hey, thank you, Justin, man. Love all the stuff you're doing, man. This is awesome. Always a pleasure. We're going to uh, get you back on and do another special teams one. Anytime. <laughs> all right, Coach. Really appreciate it, man.